Last week, I posted a haul video showcasing small businesses that made their own art supplies. From paintbrushes to palettes to paints and paper, I am just now realizing everything starts with a P. In today's video, we're actually going to be trying out all of these art supplies, testing them, seeing what they're like, and then creating some art with it. As usual, the links to the shops will be in the description below. Please check them out. Okay, let's stop talking and just freaking try these art supplies because I'm so excited. The first paints we're going to swatch today are the bean paints with the birch cookie. Again, this is made from an actual slice of wood. I will admit, I'm a little sad to mess up the perfection and cleanness of this palette, but it must be done. I've also cut out this circular little swatching sheet so that when I'm done, I can actually just tape it under this so I can always have it connected and ready to be used. All right, starting off with this orange color. Feels nice and smooth. I know I'm only two colors deep, but so far these colors are a joy to work with. They're blending well, I love them. Oh gosh, this green is, oh gosh, it's just so good. I don't even know how to describe it. This, this is the dream green right here. So here are all of our beam paints swatched on her little circular swatch color palette. And these are absolutely beautiful. I just, I feel like they're both earthy and also very bright and colorful at the same time. They were a joy to use and I can't wait to use them in a full piece. So let's continue swatching because we have a bunch of other paints to swatch as well. Next up, we're going to be swatching these Cosmic Creations watercolors. We have these shimmering, crazy colorful watercolors. So I'm super excited to see what those look like in action. I have cut out this tiny little swatch page so that it fits into the tin when I'm done with it. So I'm just gonna swatch on that, super tiny, but super convenient. Oh my gosh, it's so pigmented. Ooh, these would be so much fun to make a spacing with. I wonder if I should make a spacing in this video. Yes, I love this deep red color. Absolutely love it. Yes, give me that shimmering poop color. Absolutely, I'm here for it. Honestly, I don't know what to say other than wow. These shimmering watercolors, they're something else for sure. They're just, they're the right amount of shimmery. They're not super obnoxious. They're just very pretty and I can't wait to include these in maybe like a space scene or something. I don't know but they were so creamy and so wonderful to use. Oh my gosh. Our last set of watercolors is by Iuli and they included a huge collection of these Ocean's Sparkly Watercolors. I actually only ordered this hollow, which I'm super excited to try, but we have so many to swatch. So we're just gonna have to get into it. Here we go. These are so interesting. I don't think I've ever used a watercolor like this. It's like they have an undertone of blue, but then their sparkles are a different color. So you get this neat, interesting mix of the two colors. Very interesting effect that, again, I've never had with watercolors before. So they're very, very interesting, very different fun. It's so interesting, if you hold these at a certain angle, they all turn into this really dark, deep blue color with the way the light hits them, I guess. I, I don't know how it works, but it's so interesting. If you tilt them a different way, you can definitely tell this one's green, we've got some purples, some blues, a teal, but again, if you tilt it, oh my gosh, that's so cool, they all turn like this super dark color. Oh my gosh, it's so interesting. Wow, how cool is that? Okay, let's swatch the hollow color. It's so interesting watching the sparkles move in the water. It's almost mesmerizing. Here is our super shiny hollow watercolor. It is so hard to capture on camera just how sparkly it is, but there it is. Our last swatch in this video our last test before we work on a finished illustration is that I wanted to see how well this handmade watercolor paper actually handled watercolor. And then we will use this handmade watercolor sketchbook to create something in. And there's not much testing to do on this. It is literally just pieces of paper bound together. So 
It, it is what it is. But this is what we're going to be illustrating in later. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some blobs of color down. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh no. It, oh no. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I'll be honest. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I can admit when I'm wrong. I could have sworn when I went to buy this paper that I thought it was watercolor paper. Or maybe I gave up on trying to find watercolor paper. Again, I bought this stuff uh, two or three months ago, so I really don't remember exactly uh, my thought process. I didn't think this was watercolor paper. By the feel of it, it just seemed very absorbent and like, you know, handmade paper. So yeah, it's very absorbent. The watercolor is definitely not gonna work on this, but let's just go ahead and see what, you know, like a normal pen would do on this paper because I've never used handmade paper before. It is very interesting when you are drawing on this paper and your pen wants to go this way and that way because there's just so many bumps and crevices. I'm honestly kind of impressed with how well the pen is working on the paper. I don't know what I expected for some reason. I guess I just expected it to maybe be a little bit more absorbent with the ink. I don't know. I bet this paper would even be really good for something like, um, I don't know. Would it? Colored pencils? I'm really not sure. I'm very inexperienced with colored pencils. I just hit like a weird chunk and it made my pen kind of like jump. It was very interesting. You don't know what you're gonna get out of this paper. It's funny. Actually, I am curious. How well does it erase? Let's do a little test over here. Do a really hard pencil. Ooh, also it kind of falls apart a little bit. So I think maybe this paper is probably best with pens because the, I guess, pointiness of a pencil can be kind of harsh. I'm just gonna use my kneaded eraser here. Oh, wow, that came up really easy, actually. Oh, look at that! Oh, wow, okay, I'll be honest, that erased, I, wow, okay. That erased a lot easier than I expected. Though, it does look like we do have a little bit of paper chunkage in the eraser. My apologies to anybody who thought this was watercolor paper and especially to white dragon paper. That is completely my bad. I'm a dingus. I feel like I could doodle on this paper all day. Something about it just being handmade makes it so much more fun. Let this be a lesson to you. A lot of people ask me for watercolor tips and ask me why their watercolors are really hard to use on paper. You might be using the wrong type of paper. Look at, look how wet it is. It's still wet. This is our handmade paper doodles. I love this paper, really fun. Definitely going to include this in some sort of art project in the future. I loved it. Look at that texture, it's just so much fun. You looking at it? Look at it. Okay, it is time to use our handmade watercolor sketchbook. This one actually does have watercolor paper in it that was hand bound. Let's make a doodle, let's make an illustration using all of our watercolors and different supplies. Definitely gave me some space vibes. So let's see what we can come up with. Space theme, space theme, space theme. So I started off by doodling some random, well, I was going to say aliens, but they definitely look like little worm narwhals coming out of an asteroid. I don't know, I was just trying to come up with something silly and fun and playful and just have fun with this illustration. So I filled the spread with some space theme creations and I started to really like this alien dog creature and I have a dog spaceman walking the alien dog. I was really liking the vibe of this illustration, just, you know, a dog spaceman taking his alien space dog for a walk, peeing on an asteroid, nothing weird to see here. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to go with with these characters, but I knew that this was generally what I wanted to go with. So onto the penciling. So just as I had thought these sketches were a little bit different from what I ended up going with, we have a moon in the corner here and I drew a spaceship that had landed. We have our space alien dog looking out to space with its little space puppies. I had to draw some little space puppies. Look how large those heads are. It kind of looks like a wiener with the legs, but 
They're super adorable and I love them. And then we have our spaceman, which I turned into a space cat, trying to retrieve one of the puppies that has accidentally escaped and is floating away in space. So that is the general idea for this illustration. I definitely wanted to have a lot of open, sp open space. What a funny pun, Casey. Totally intentional. I wanted to have a large open area where I was going to paint in the space because I really wanted to showcase these shimmering, shining watercolors. So at this point, there's not too much I can review, but with the watercolor sketchbook, the paper that was used is the Canson 140 pound watercolor paper, a good quality, sturdy watercolor paper. You can't go wrong with Canson. I know the fact that I have a string going down the middle of my illustration might bother some people, but I'm looking at this watercolor sketchbook as just that, a sketchbook where I practice, doodle in, and not intend on creating finished pieces that I want to use for anything. So having the string down the middle of my illustration was kind of fun in a way that it was really interesting to work around. This is a sketchbook, so if I ever do want a finished illustration that doesn't have a string in the middle, I'll just use a loose piece of paper. Overall, really enjoyed this sketchbook. It laid really flat. It was nice to work in. Nice, nice. Moving on to the watercolors, I actually found out just as I was about to start coloring the moon that there is no black in these watercolors. None of the sets I bought have black. So it was really interesting. I think this is actually the first time I've mixed my own black watercolor and I think I did pretty good. There's a slight purpley tint to it because I just wanted there to be some extra color to this illustration, especially when it comes to painting space. Now, I don't mind space painted with black, but I do find space painted with, say, a really deep dark purple or blue to be a lot more interesting. So what I did to paint space in this particular illustration is I mixed my own black slash deep purple and I here and there mixed in different oceans colors, different shimmering colors, Basically, the space is a combination of the beam watercolor, the cosmic creation watercolors, and the Iuli watercolors. Together, their powers combined created this amazing, shimmering, deep, dark space, and I absolutely love it. I think I gotta say my favorite favorites out of all of these, just because I've never seen this before, was the Ocean's watercolor. It was perfect with space. The fact that you can look at this space from one angle and see this deep dark blue color, but then turn your head just a little bit and see this color shining through. It just looks like, it looks like space. And I'm definitely going to be using these Ocean's watercolors in future space illustrations because it's just so perfect. You can even tell from the different angles when I paint from the side on the bottom, you can see this really dark blue blue color, but from the top you see a more colorful space. Overall, all these watercolors were a joy to work with. They mixed really well. They layered really well. Look how vibrant and colorful these beam watercolors are. They're just so colorful. Of course, the Kumo paint palette was perfect for my mixing needs, and these little squares are the perfect size for an illustration like this. Loved it. And the watercolor brushes from Sugar House Ceramic were also great. I don't know where the actual brush tips are from, but they worked really well. I have absolutely no complaints with them. Overall, I would definitely recommend all of these small businesses. They all seem to create quality products. They were super nice when I needed help, and also so thankful that you guys were already checking out the shops. So thank you so much. Please check the links in the descriptions if you want to get your own handmade art supplies. And I think that is going to be it for me. Just check out this space, just, just check out the space, the shimmer, the sparkle. It's amazing. back to say a huge thank you to my patrons for all of their support. You guys are seriously amazing. I could not be doing this without you. If you want to get early access to my videos, secret sketches, and more, check out my Patreon link in the description. Thank you guys all so, so much for the support. Stay golden. Bye.